If you want to start an online business and drop shipping is one of the businesses you're considering, watch this video because I'm going to give you the whole story behind my own drop shipping experience and then you can decide if it sounds like something you want to do. Let's get started. Okay. Here we go. Like the video if you're excited to hear this drop shipping story. Yay! Subscribe to the channel if you hate your job and you'd rather make money online and travel and live that boss life because of course you want to do that, all right? We normally talk Kindle publishing and merch. Basically, those are the only two things we really talked about. Time to add a, a sprinkle in a few more things. One, drop shipping. You can't have an online business YouTube channel and not have a drop shipping video, basically. So yeah. here's so, that drop shipping video. We're not going to talk about drop shipping a lot, but this video is about drop shipping, and I'm also going to make one about my Amazon FBA experience because a lot of people don't realize well, you don't, we didn't just go into Kindle Publishing and, and then really fucking well. success from the beginning. Yeah, that's, that's not how it works. works. No. So yes. we've uh, played around with a bunch of different other online businesses. Right. Now, before we get into it, take it away. We are collaborating with another YouTuber in the online business. Space. I love collabs. Love collabs. Yeah. His name is Greg Priest. Greg Priest. You have probably heard of him. If you know us, then you've probably seen him as well. The name of his channel is Start Starting Up. Check it out. He has an online business channel. And if you're watching us, you're into online business, so totally go over to his channel. He's got a lot of subscribers, like 11,000 right now. Go over to his channel. Subscribe to his channel because he talks about online business because we know that's what you're into. Uh, aren't we all? No, we're not. We aren't all, but we all should be. So he also talks about affiliate marketing, Shopify, e-commerce stores, drop shipping. I don't think he talks about it so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Merch by Amazon, the keyword research stuff, shit like that. Other online business opportunities because there's so much out there that we don't even know exists. Yeah. That we just, we just know Kindle Publishing fucking works. Anyway, yeah. what we're doing is a Q&A with him where we're taking questions from you guys. Yes. Ask him in the comments. You got to write hashtag ask hashtag Greg. Ask, ask Greg. Has, hashtag ask Greg. Yeah. And so, then, so please, we, if we don't get any questions from you guys, any comments, we'll, we're going to go into the Q&A and be like, yeah, Greg, uh, the subs didn't show up. Yeah. Like, they, they didn't come through. The lit fam didn't come through. So, the lit fam always comes through. So, yeah, uh, go over to his channel, look, uh, check him out, uh, and just ask him some questions. It could be anything. Hashtag like, ask Greg, ask whatever you want. On, let's keep it online business related. Yeah, yeah, online business related. Ask him, why don't you do Kindle publishing? That's a good question. That is a good question. Just want to say that real quick. Hashtag ask, ask Greg. Greg. Like this. Bang, bang. Except it's in one. Yeah. Now let's get started with the actual video, which is I'm gonna tell you guys all about my dropshipping experience because yes. dropshipping is the very first online business I ever started, and the first online business a lot of people begin. So it's probably the most popular one, don't you think? Yeah, dropshipping is like uh, it's, the, it's the most competitive shit in the world. Yeah, trust me. It's anyway. what everyone's doing. Yeah. So. I don't even know where to start. That's why I have these notes in front of me. So I'm just kind of go down the list. Hopefully I cover everything. So back when Christian and I were going to college, community college, we were like, this sucks. We need to find another way. And then we found online business. And then we looked for different online businesses to start. Mm -hmm. Christian started with Kindle Publishing. Kindle Publishing. And I started with dropshipping. The first online business I ever started was dropshipping. So after I had decided that I wanted to do dropshipping, I knew that a course was probably what I should get. Exactly. So that's the thing. When you want to learn something, what do you do? You go to someone who's doing it successfully. Mm -hmm. So I, you were doing I, it. I knew this without you were doing it before you even started. Exactly. You were doing it right from the way beginning. We hadn't even done any online businesses. You just know. Let's get a course. It makes sense. Yeah. So, after doing research, that's a good time to plug the fact that we will be coming out with, with a our course. Own course. If so, you, if you want to make money with audiobooks, buy that course. Oh, when it comes show out. the logo. Bam! <laughs> Boom! Ah! <laughs> Audiobook Income Academy! <laughs> you needed your coffee this morning. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, I'm just excited to be in Denmark. Yeah. Which is where we are. We're in Denmark now. No longer in New Jersey. Fuck, no kids run around everywhere screaming. We have a whole house yeah, to ourselves! Yeah, Rasmus! Christian! Fucking come play with us. Yeah. We love the kids, but like, we got work to do. So after doing a bunch of research on what course I should buy to get started, mm -hmm. I came across one, and it was called Dropship Lifestyle. 
dropship lifestyle. I think it's one of maybe the biggest, at least one of the biggest uh, online courses to learn dropshipping. And the the guy who made it is, is a beast. Yeah, well, yeah, but he's pulling in racks a day from his course. Yeah, racks a day. Definitely. If you don't know what a rack is, that's one thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Multiple racks every day just from this one course. Yeah. So the course it costs. I think it was nine hundred ninety seven dollars. They may always got to end it in a nine seven. I don't know why, but you do. You do. I think maybe it was thirteen hundred and it was on discount for. Did you go through a webinar? 000? No. Okay. No. I think I found it through YouTube. That's why I found them. I had less than a five thousand bucks, and I spent a thousand bucks on this course when I'd never done any sort of online business before. But that's what but you, you should can just do. tell. No, like that was the right decision. I know. Even if. We'll see how the dropshipping story goes, mm-hmm. but it was still the right decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fucking so. teaches you everything you need to know. Right when we started, our mindsets were already it was already in like the right place. this is it. I'm doing it. There's yeah. no going back. No, I'm going all in. Yeah, it, it's not the shit where you walk up. What the fuck is that? I'm feeling the water with my toe. No, we just uh, we dive in. We dove right head in first. So and that's the way you should be. In my opinion, so that's, especially so I, with online business, mm-hmm. fucking just go for it. So I bought this course for one thousand bucks. I don't want to talk too much about the course. I just want to say it was very thorough. It's really good. I have no complaints about it. I can't blame any of oh, the things oh, that happened wait. to me on that course. Once after I bought this course, the first step obviously is niche selection. So I spent a lot of time looking for what product to sell, and the way that they teach it is you sell high ticket products. So a minimum of like that's the 300, 300 bucks. We're not trying to sell 100 units and then make 100 bucks. I want to have to sell one unit and make 100 bucks. Exactly. Or make much more than exactly. So you could sell five. You could sell pencil cases for five dollars each, mm-hmm. and you have to sell uh, 200 of them before you have a thousand dollars in sales. Mm-hmm. Or you could sell a one thousand dollar product and Boom. make one sale. So the product that I chose was like high high end. So obviously there's a variety of this product. Can you tell them the product? No, I can't. I can't say what the exactly. product is. That, that's annoying. Because, like we so badly want to tell you because yeah. we don't care. Yeah. But it's in a contract. Yeah. Saying so that you can't. So I guess I have to kind of spoil the ending here. I did sell the business in the end, um, and it says in the contract, it's good, uh, a good ending. It's a happy ending. Mm-hmm. Um, it says in in the contract that I'm not allowed to share with anyone what I'm selling, the website, anything like that. So Stick I really around. Stick around to the end to find out how much Rasmus sold it for. We'll tell you exactly how much. Yep. How much he was making with it and how much he was able to flip it for. It was actually pretty crazy. So these were high-end products that I was selling. On the low end, I think the most, the cheapest product I had was 650 bucks. The most expensive, I think it was like 4,000. Holy fuck. Yeah. So, like when I made a sale on those, which I, I did make sales on those, it was a good day. So after I knew what product to sell, I built my website, which took such a long time. And also registering the business, how to get an LLC. I paid someone from Fiverr to make my this? to make my website. Uh, it went poorly. They sucked. I found someone else. But in the end, I got it made after at least a month. This money is- wasted and spent. But I finally got the website up. It looked good, and then I was ready to move on to the next step. This is the shit that people don't like. That's the back end stuff. Like mm-hmm. you, when you have to register your business, costs yeah. like two, three hundred dollars. Get a website made. You had a really good website. Like a very, very, very good website. I, I, I spent the time to like really yeah. make it nice. So just know if you want to start your own dropshipping website, that stuff is included and no one really talks about it, but you have to do it. So after I had my website made, I was ready to call suppliers because how dropshipping works, you probably know. You have someone else makes the product. You sell it on your website. Once you get a sale on your website, you list their shit, right? And once you get a sale, they ship it straight to the customer. Supplier, you, customer, it goes just yeah, like that. You never have to touch it. Yeah, you're just selling it for someone else. Yeah. So I... And keeping the difference. That's yeah. how you make money. Right. So the next step after building my website was contacting these suppliers and then getting their approval to sell their products on my own website. So to my surprise, I think it was for a website that me with no business experience at all and a website with nothing on it. Uh, I actually got approved by quite a lot of suppliers. I think it was pretty easy. I guess for them, it's also, it can't hurt. It's just their products on more websites on the internet. So yeah, so I actually started, I think in the beginning, four suppliers. So selling this product for four different brands. And then I guess once I had those, that's when I started actually advertising, um, listing it, doing everything you had to do. And then over time, I added more suppliers. I think in the end, I had 12. 12 different brands I was selling their products for. One of these or what's supposed to be a pro of dropshipping is that there's basically no startup cost. 
I'll tell you that was not the case for me. Bullshit. So, I mean, Bullshit. Website design, I couldn't do that myself, so I had to pay someone to do that. And then for these suppliers, when you sign to like be allowed to sell their products, sometimes they want you to like buy one of their products or multiple of their products up front before you're allowed to sell them. That's stupid. Yeah, so they'll hold the inventory for you. You don't ever get it. But you kind of have to make like a commitment. So I had to do that for 33, like a third of the suppliers that I work with wanted me to do this. I was like putting money down that I didn't know if I was ever going to get that money back. Because I honestly didn't know what I was doing. But I was taking the risk and I believed in it. So that's why I did it. But so I'm just all in. Yeah. Going I'm just saying in. there was like some real startup costs that I was not expecting. If you're expecting to uh, start a dropshipping business with like zero money, you need money. You need, you need money yeah. to start. Yeah. Guys, this was two years ago. So we've been doing online business for two years. We learned a lot of things along the way. Yes. But at the same time, it's only two years. And we already know it's crazy, right? Now. Crazy. I went in another two years. Wow. In the 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Guys, so get started now with your online business. That's the whole point of this. So yeah, I think in the beginning, I spent, I have it written here, 4,000 bucks in inventory. Oh. Well, hold on. Oh. That, was not, that was not all in the beginning. I think in all, oh. I, I bought 4,000 bucks worth of inventory. In the beginning, it was maybe like 2,000. You so like had two, that much money? Right? Uh, I think I spent fucking almost all of it on this. With no guarantee that I would ever get that money back. Finally, after getting a few suppliers on board, I listed all the products. And then I started running ads because that's obviously you can't get like free traffic. No one's just going to show up to your website. Yeah, you think you just start, start a website like, oh, and no. then you just get sales. You got to pay for traffic. No one. And let, let, me me tell one you person, let me tell you something. Wait, let me traffic is not cheap. Not one person comes to your website if you just put it up and do nothing. You will get zero visitors. Never mind a sale, just getting exactly. visitors. Getting visitors to your website is hard enough. And then converting them? Yeah. First of all, I was working on this 24 seven. Like, this was not a passive online business. It may as well just have been like a brick and mortar store where I was working like nine to five, you know? But I was just staying at home, which okay, I'm at home, which is better. But I was working so much all the time. And it was really stressful. And then I saw Christian working at Kindle Publishing at the same time. Mm -hmm. He was making more money, working less. And this sounds, I feel like I'm trying to sell you on Kindle Publishing, which I'm not really trying to. I'm just I mean, how Kindle Publishing is just way better than drop shipping. Yeah. Way better. So I was working like 24 7, and it was honestly really stressful. And I'll tell you what the most stressful part was. The worst part of all this about drop shipping, not even close. Customer, customer support. Service. Oh. Customer service, dealing with customers. I hate it. And especially the product I was selling, it was a high-end product. And there was like a lot of moving parts to it. It wasn't simple like a couch. Like a couch is a couch. You, you, get, you get what you expect. Uh, but with the item that I was selling, there was a lot of moving parts. People didn't know how it worked. Technology that people didn't understand. Yeah. Apparently. And then they would get it and be like, oh, the, the web page says that it's going to do this, but it can't quite do that much. I'm trying to see how I can explain it without letting you know what the product is. I, I would be so curious. Like, what the fuck is this damn product? Yeah. Customer service was by far the worst part about this because they want, they always want free shipping. Every time there's a problem, they call you. Like when you're just getting calls all the time from customers and it's not like calls where I can close a sale. It's calls where they're complaining and they want me to do something. And it's not calls like the type of YouTube comments we get. They don't call and say, how, you guys are the shit. You guys are making the most use, selling the most useful products. <laughs> like I'm so happy. No, it's you like, you guys are the best. It's shit like, hey, my product came. Why doesn't this work? Oh, this little part that said, it's not here. Where is this part? How does it work? How do I attach it? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not even my product. I've never seen it. Call the supplier. But I can't like say that. Like it's hard. It really puts you in a hard position. Cause why couldn't you say that? Well, it's my website. I have to be like an expert on the products. They ask me like, it's honestly a pretty simple question. Like, how does this part work? Truthfully, I have no idea how it works. But I can't really say that, you know, or else I'd, I would completely lose respect from them, and I lose all legitimacy as a real business. Truthfully, I have no idea <laughs> what I'm selling. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen the product. Like, I really don't know how it works. This totally reminds me of a new thing that I forgot to mention so far. So after doing customer service on my own for like maybe three months, I hired someone to be my customer service. Smart. Rep. Outsourcing. Yeah. Smart. Outsourcing equals good. Correct. But it was not, it's not as simple as just you hire someone and now it's solved. Now you have someone to customer, customer service. You never have to deal with it. So I had, took a long time to find them, train them. And he would do phone support, but I still handled emails myself. 
which I get a lot of emails every day asking random stupid questions, but I had to answer them obviously. And once again, he hasn't seen the product either. So he's not an expert on the product as well. So most of the time he would take a phone call. He'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he would just message me for an answer. Then I would ask the supplier and then they would answer me. Then I'd tell my VA, then he would call the customer back. You see what I mean? It was just, it was a mess. Customer That's service was a mess. A word of advice on that, choose a product that is simple and one that you know, so you can answer all the questions yourself. So that's one reason why I think my whole dropshipping experience is pretty negative. All right guys, so I quickly just want to review some of the numbers from my dropshipping store, like expenses, revenue, profit, all that. So we'll start here with the monthly expenses. So these were my fixed expenses every month. No matter if I just didn't do anything all month, these are the expenses that I had to pay. So the big one was 300 for the customer service VA I had, and then some other small ones add up to $364 in expenses every month. But now let's go over to the sales. So I started October 2016 in my very first month sales $2,999.50 and that added up to profit loss of $506. That's not included the fixed monthly expense. So $506 plus 365. So I lost 860 bucks my first month. Yeah. Yeah. In my second month, November, yeah, okay, November, I think I closed it because my first month was so bad, so I just like optimized a bunch of stuff. December, which I guess was my second month, then 7,000 in sales, $1,400 in profit. So that was like, that was really good. I still, you still got to subtract, subtract the 360 in fixed expenses. So I have $1,100 in profit, real profit. So that was actually going really well. And then my third month, 12,000 in sales. $1,900 in, in profit. So my first three months, like I was making more sales, making more profit. I was, uh, I was really excited about like the potential of my dropshipping business at this time. And then my next month, February, I had $1,658 in sales minus $500 in profit. And that was working all month, seven sales one month and then two the next. I, I don't know what happened. The sales just didn't come. I was running ads. I was spending a lot of money. This column right here is the ad cost. So you can see what I was spending on each product. So the first product I ever sold $283 in ads just to get that sale. And then I lost $216 because of that. The ad cost was like the biggest expense of them all because it's really hard to actually get people on your website like that. So month number four, 7,000 in sales, $364 in profit. And then with the fixed expense, basically zero. I made no money that month. And every month I was working all the time, always doing things, customer support, trying to grow the business, new ideas, all kinds of stuff. Month number five, 12,500 in sales, 994 in profit. Next month, 4,000 in sales. You see how much it swings. It'd be 12,000 one month, then 4,000 the next, then 15, and then seven. Like, like you kind of expect to scale and then expect and then get growth every single month but that is not at all what happened it was so like it seemed every sale was almost almost random like i have to kind of get lucky to get a sale you know and i had lucky months and then luck unlucky months so 4,266 in profit and then this month june was my best month ever i had seventeen thousand five hundred dollars in sales and still only $1,457 in profit. So my, my profit margin is like 8%. Uh, yeah. So June, July. So this is when I was like, honestly getting really tired of running this business. I was working so hard and making very little money. That's when I decided or I realized that I wanted to sell the business. It was not worth my time. It was way too much effort and way too much work for such a small amount of money. Yeah, so I just want to show you guys that. I'll continue the story back over on the couch. Back from the computer. All right, so you got to see all my numbers, what kind of what my sales and expenses looked like. Um, and yeah, so like I said, I sold the business after that. And in the end, I managed to get $17,000 for it. So for me at that time, was <laughs> what a, a sucker. Crazy amount of money. Yeah. No, he wasn't a sucker because the typical like selling price for a draft I don't know why I did this. Selling price. The, it's selling price. Selling price. The typical it's value selling price. selling price of a dropshipping store is twenty about twenty times the monthly profit.
which for 17,000, I think we did the math, it was 850 per month. I think I was just shy because there was a lot of Close. there was I had a bunch that were over a lot like oh, 1800 and then pfft, lost 500 bucks. So in, in the in the end it was about 800 bucks on average. So I sold that for 17,000. That was fucking amazing. When that happened, that was a lot of money. Yeah, well, that's that still really crazy. that still is a fuck lot of money. Yeah, when you just get that at once, direct transfer, seventeen k. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. But after I sold the business, that's when I got in full time into Kindle publishing. Oh yeah, and it's kind of been like <sighs> uphill in a good way. Progress from there, all progress. In the end, what did I learn from all this? I learned that I hate customer support and I hate dealing with customers. I learned that ads are very hard and very expensive. Drop shipping is very competitive. I learned that hiring someone to do customer service for you is a big pain in the ass. And all, and it all really just puts in perspective how great Kindle Publishing is. Yeah. Slash self publishing. Oh, and I learned that drop shipping is not passive. I hear people like, there are stories about dropshipping and they sound way different than mine. Now, I don't know if, if it's because they're like pretending. They, they want to sound like it's awesome. They want to sound like dropshipping That's is awesome. Probably and this and that. That's probably it. But there are also many different ways to do dropshipping. And the way I did was not scalable because of the product I was selling. And like customer service, the, the amount of customer service I would have had to do if I was selling five times as many would have been impossible. Absolutely impossible. I could not scale the business for customer service reasons. Dropshipping is not a passive way to make money online. It's not one where you can sit at the beach or wake up in the morning with more money in the bank, something like that. Because with every order, you gotta fulfill it, you gotta deal with the customer, you gotta do all this kind of stuff. All that combined is why I don't fuck with drop shipping. I would not recommend it, because not to say that it's a bad online business to start. It's just there's so many but better Kindle ways. Publishing is way better. There's so many better ways, and I'm not here to, yeah. Sounds like we're just here. We're just being this is why honest. Kindle publishing is awesome. We're just being honest. Yeah, being it's the truth. truthful. It was honestly, in the end, a really horrible experience. Left a very poor taste in my mouth when it comes to dropshipping. It really, yeah. So when any, anyone says like, "Ooh, I'm gonna start drop ship, a dropshipping business," I'm just like, oh, I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into. Like it's, huh. it's much harder huh. than Which it sounds. Is. But that's just my honest experience with dropshipping. I ran this business for a whole year. A whole year full time. Mm -hmm. So like my opinion on it is valid. Like it's not just something I tried for a short period of time. But yeah, that's that's what dropshipping was like for me. Leave a like if you liked the video, if you learned something, if you thought it was helpful, if you liked my little story. Like animation, like animation, like animation. Subscribe because we're all about online business, making money online, traveling, living that boss life. Living that boss life. Subscribe, subscribe animation, subscribe animation, subscribe animation. Animations convert better. See you in the next video.